Since you're the last one who walked in, you got to sing a special right now? (laughs) (laughs) That made his heart go fast. (laughs) Matthew 4. Okay, so we'll see what we got going on here. Matthew 4, verse 8. This is a temptation uh, of the Lord. Some of you Illinois folks are really rebellious. (laughs) Okay, Matthew 4. And let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I do thank you for our time together. Thank you, and I do pray and ask that you'd help us to see what your word says and help us, our, our faith in your word, to magnify more and more and to see what your word says and help us to be informed people, but not fearful people. And I pray you'd help us to be patient with others, as many will be fearful, but yet help us to be able to... Uh, See what your word says in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Matthew 4. Okay, I did put on the back of the bulletin in case uh, we're forced not to meet 
Okay, so on the back of the bulletin, and I would suggest that uh, have your own church service in your house, read some scripture, pray, send your offering to me. <laughs> okay, and then I, I give several websites on there. Uh, BitChute, if you look at that on the back of the bulletin, I don't think we have anything up on that yet. Kenneth may be able to work on it. He may not be able to. So Ken and I are going to split the awards at the judgment seat about what's on YouTube or BitChute. So. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so Matthew 4, verse 8. We're just going to look at the second temptation. Again, the, uh, verse 8, Again, the devil taketh him up into exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Okay, Jesus said, You're lying. You don't have the power. He didn't say that, did he? He didn't say he was lying. So the Bible wants us to meditate on things. Two topics you're not supposed to talk about, religion and politics. It's right here in this verse. Politics is the world kingdoms, religion is worship me. So let's take this to the limit. The devil is, de God has delegated to Satan the kingdoms of this world after he took it from Israel, delegated to Satan. He gives it to whomsoever he wills, the ones that worship him most. Do they worship him in private, in secret, or in the public? Okay? So this tells us the standard operating procedure is uh, wicked people are getting positions. The exception proves the rule. Okay, Satan gives glory and power of the kingdoms to his worshipers. And the worship is usually perverted and violent. Okay, so the ones in power are usually evil, wicked, and the exception proves the rule. I'll come through some of the exceptions. Okay, in Daniel 12, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Matthew 13. Okay, the difficulty of trying to be dogmatic about things, and I'm not going to be dogmatic, so I'm just going to throw in options out here. Jesus many times would say to people, what do you think? And then he'd give the option. In Matthew 13, if you pick up verse 24 to 30, the parable of the tares and the wheat, where the, the uh, man sowed the wheat in the ground, but then an enemy came in and sold, sold, uh, sowed tares. And then he says in verse 30, Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles, and burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, and then the apostles ask him, what do you mean? And so in verse 36, verse 37, he gives the interpretation. He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. And therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. So shall be in the end of the world. So if you go to any government complex, you will see symbolism of Christianity and Satanism side by side. Okay, and so this is a prophecy. Okay, in the bulletin I put the quote, the difficulty you and I have, okay, where in Daniel 12 verse 4, okay, this is a prophecy in Daniel where it says, and, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. And so 
Uh, the internet provides a great source of knowledge, but it also provides a great source of misinformation. And so that's what's very confusing. So if you and I are very discerning, okay, where we can weed through misinformation and get information. 1 John 4, 6, hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So it's intermingled. Okay, but because of this intermingling, it makes it difficult to figure out what is true. What is true. William Casey said back in 1981, we'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. That's wonderful that the world's been getting better. And that's not true anymore. <laughs> and of course... Uh, the news media, since the 1950s, I have a quote on that where, let me see, get this quote, I got it here. This guy named John Swinton, chief of staff of the New York Times in 1953, he was called the dean of his profession. He was toasting a meeting of all these journalists, and he said this, there is no such thing at this date of the world's history in America as an independent press. You know it and I know it. Okay, and then he says, the business of journalists is to destroy the truth, to lie outright, to pervert, to vilify, to fawn at the feet of mammon, and to sell his country and his race for his daily bread. You know it, and I know it, and what, is fo what folly is this toasting an independent press? We are the tools and vassals of rich men behind the scenes. We are the jumping jacks. They pull the strings, and we dance our talents. Our possibilities and our lives are all the property of other men. We are intellectual prostitutes. 1953. We know things have gotten better. CNN started off as Clinton News Network. Then it turned into the Clown News Network. And now it's the Cronola or Crono. Boy, I have a hard time with that. I'm going to go with COVID-19. <laughs> Corona. Corona. Coronavirus. Okay? Uh, and they've worked the world into a frenzy. Okay? And so we got a Bible that has foretold these things. And so I want to in increase our faith in the book. Okay? It's an amazing thing. Okay, now here's what we have to deal with, okay? In Matthew 24, the apostles asked Jesus about the sign of thy coming. And the first thing he said, take heed that no man deceive you. So we live in a day of massive deception. Okay, now when this deception is revealed to a person, there's a... There's a um, a th I guess you call it a theory, but there's a concept in psychology called cognitive dissonance. Okay, and what does that mean? Okay, the, the meaning of that is it occurs when a person holds two or more contradictory beliefs or ideas or values and participates in an action that goes against one of these three and experiences psychologi psychologi psychological stress because of that. Okay, example in the Bible. Maniac of Gadara, real nutcase, came to Jesus, got fixed, got healed, right mind. How do the people respond? Get out of here. Cognitive dissonance. It's a shock. It's a mental shock. I can't deal with this. What did Jesus do? He left. Gave time to work through the system came back. They were open. Okay, and that's often the reaction that people have. Okay, and you, we need to recognize that. Mel Gibson said, I think in Europe, Hollywood studios are drenched in the blood of innocent children. Baby blood is so popular in Hollywood that it basically operates as currency of its own. I'm not going to read the rest where he talk. Is he, is he serious? Cognitive dissonance. It's hard to deal with. Where do we draw the line in on some of these things? Ultra mind control is accomplished through abuse and violence. The apostles experienced this when Jesus said, I'm going to suffer many things. I'm going to die. 
I'm going to rise from the dead. How many times did he say that to them? They didn't believe it. Why? Cognitive dissonance. There are some truths that are so spiritually above our head that it's difficult. And the only way we can believe the resurrection of Christ is the Spirit of God bears witness to our spirit. Okay? And so, trying to research this, trying to figure out what to do, and trying to understand what to do, it's, it's very difficult. In 1981, there was a book published called The Eyes of Darkness. Dean Kunst is the author. It was a fictional novel. It described a mother and a son that got killed, and she's trying to investigate the death of her son. And let me read you a page, just a small quote. One man is explaining, to understand that, you have to go back 20 months. It was around then that a Chinese scientist defected the United States, carrying a discat record of China's most important and dangerous new biological weapon in a decade. They called the stuff Wuhan 400. 400, 20 times 20 is, okay, 1981. Okay, what am I saying? No, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying it's interesting. Wuhan is the very first place in the world that had 5G encompass the entire city. Very first place. Okay, so let's go back to the Old Testament and get some knowledge from the Bible. 2 Kings chapter 10. First thought is this. The history of Israel demonstrates the pattern of nations. Israel was the commonwealth or a republic out of the Old Testament. The United States, Israel was chosen by God. You know the United States, our, our people at the beginning chose God. God chose Israel, but our people chose God and became a republic and established Christianity as the established religion in our country. The Supreme Court said that on a couple occasions. Just read the documents. When you read history books, you're reading history second-hand, third-hand, fourth-hand. You can't trust it. So you try to find copies of what they actually wrote, what the pilgrims wrote. Read the Declaration of Independence. Read the Constitutions. Read the actual speeches that people said. That way you get it right from the source. Okay? That's what valid history. The history of Israel, they start off, yeah, God didn't want them to have a king. Uh, they... they dumped their theocratic republic, came a king. The first king ruled for 40 years. David, second king, ruled for 40 years. And then um, Solomon ruled for 40 years. And then, then it turned into a soap opera, and we'll call it as the kingdom turns. A series of ups and downs. Okay, in 2 Kings chapter 10, there's a guy named Jehu. I like the guy's techniques, okay? And you read about this guy, Jehu, and uh, it's a funny read, chapter 9 and 10, where he, he was chosen by God to get rid, to punish the descendants of Ahab and kill the Baalites. And so what he did is he pretended to be a Baalite. He pretended to have a Baalite meeting. And while they were in having their Baalite meeting, you know, probably... Doing something pretty bad in their meeting. Uh, he had a soldiers on the outside. He said, kill them. And he killed them all. Pretty good technique. How did he sneak them in there? And you would think, oh, Jehu ended up real good. Not really. Not really. Second Kings chapter 10. I mean, he performed a, an amazing act. Second Kings chapter 10, verse 28. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. How long did that last? Not too long. And then it says, How be it from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel a sin. That's what he's talking about. The Baalites, what Mel Gibson hinted at, or actually said. He said, Jehu de departed not from them to wit the golden calves that were in Bethel and that were in Dan. 
And the Lord said unto Jehu, Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes, and hast done unto the house of Ahab, according to all that was in mine heart, thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart, for he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. He did something great, but his heart really wasn't right with God. The next guy that does something like this is Josiah. In 2 Kings chapter 22, Josiah becomes a king. He's eight years old. Uh, they restore the, the Jewish temple worship. They found the Bible. He read it. His heart was tender toward God. He wanted to have a great revival, and he was buddies with Jeremiah. He and Jeremiah were buddies, and they had some good things going on. And so he cleaned up the community. Second Kings chapter 23, cleaned up the community. Josiah, ever see... Uh, you know, the movie, The Mount of, of the Count of Monte Cristo. I love the techniques. You know, the Lord just might be doing that. He might be doing that. In 2 Kings, if you just kind of use your read, skating, read uh, speeding skills here, you'll see down in verse 5, he put out the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places. What are they doing in the high places? Pretty bad. Pretty bad. If you had visual pictures, you'd have cognitive dissonance. In the cities of Judah and the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burn incense unto Baal, to the sun, to the moon, and to the planets. The only time the word planets is found in the Bible, you can see how it's used. How is it used? Sun, moon, and blank? Stars. That's the Bible word for planets. So another word, planets, stars. That's, all the planets are named after pagan deities. Venus, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Pluto the dog. Okay, what are they, it's Baal worship. It's nature worship. It's climate change. What's the intent behind all this? In verse 6, they had a grove. He broke down the grove. Verse 7, look at there. The Sodomites are right next to the Jewish temple. What, what are them dumb people doing there? Uh, verse 10, he defiled Tophet, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnon. What went on there? So that no man might make his son or daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. Oh. There's a 40-foot statue over there in Hollywood and 3,000 acres of virgin forest, and they call that 40-foot owl statue Molech. Been there for a long time. This is what's going on behind the scenes. Josiah had a, a great revival, a series of ups and downs. He's an exception. Daniel said in Daniel 4, he said that God puts the basis of men as kings and kingdom. That's the normal. In Daniel 7, verse 17, he likened kings and kingdoms to a lion, to a bear, to a leopard. Ever watch them? Nature shows how those animals have zero emotion about killing things. That's kings and kingdoms. The exception proves a rule. Every once in a while throughout history, God will let this go, flood. Let's it go, Sodom, Gomorrah. Let's it go, Jehu. Let's it go, Josiah. Where are we at? Could be good, could be bad. Who knows? Only God knows. The second thought is the tares and the wheat in the kingdom of God grow together. The tares operate by deception and force. Perverted and violent worship of Satan. Jesus said, I've come to give you life, life more abundantly, but the thief has come to kill, to destroy. Okay, and so let's look at what we see in front of us or around us, and let's look at it from the extreme, from bad 
and the evil getting their way to the good and possibly the good getting their way. And where you and I are at, where you believe in it, that's your choice. Just think about it. Okay? Let's say this virus is really bad. That's what they're saying. Well, the remedy is B2, yarrow, olive leaf. If you want some, we have some in the room back there. This virus has been around for a long time. Okay? Or is that, is that a diversion to put 5G in? Fifth generation, 60 gigahertz, where now they're cleaning the schools. Oh, they're disinfecting for the virus, but maybe they're putting 5G in. That's, a, that's, one, that's one theory. It is out there. Okay, but 5G, you know, I got my Q-Link here, and I got my uh, quartz here, and I had a shunt guide in this pocket, but I gave it to Brother Delmer this morning. And the thing about 5G is, it's, it, if my understanding is correct, it's got to be line of sight, and it's got to be, it falls off real quickly. Okay, so we do have a remedy. Okay, but let's say I get the, the virus, and I die, and I get to heaven, and I say... Man, I should have took that B2. I would dare say, we're going to say, you know, for me to live as Christ and to die is, I would say, it's like the older gentleman when he and his wife died and they went to heaven and he said, man, I would have been here much sooner if I hadn't been eating them old bread buns. Okay, or, but, if, okay, if you get your microwave and you walk away from it, you know that it does fall, it does die out. I read about this lady, she's trying to dry out her poodle and she put it in there and of course it exploded. <laughs> I don't know if it really happened, but... Whew. Okay, so with the virus, we got a remedy. With the 5G, we got a remedy. Okay, so, why waste our emotion? Okay, now, it's, it's natural to experience the, our emotions during a crisis. That's normal. People are freaking out. That's normal. If, it's like a guy says, if you're not paranoid, you're not normal. <laughs> okay, and the thing is, if you get informed, yes, you can be paranoid, but yet the Bible says we're not under the spirit of fear. And he said the, the prudent, okay, the prudent foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on are punished. So we can be prudent, but we could also realize that people are panicking and this would be an opportunity to give the gospel. Jesus said you preach the gospel to the poor. Why? Because they're more desperate than the rich. So the tares and we are growing together and it's not surprised. God's not in heaven saying, oh, I wonder what's going on. Okay, now, that's the, the dark side. Let's go on the possibility. Maybe our president is a Josiah. Don't know? Some of you know about QAnon. I kept up on that for a while. And when George Bush's funeral took place and not some things didn't seem to be happening, I kind of gave up on Q. But some of us don't know some of these things. It appears, according to QAnon, if, again, none of us have first-hand knowledge. Okay, QAnon appears to be patriotic military leaders who are cooperating with Trump, protecting Trump, and then they'll throw out, how do I say that, Ken? Um, drops. Okay, and then there's a bunch of people that read this and try to interpret them. Okay? And a drop was thrown out in August a couple years back. Was it, was it last year or the year before that John McCain was going to have a bad day? 
And it appears that he got executed because of his crimes. And then in September, George Bush pleaded guilty to crimes of treason and racketeering and human trafficking and was ex executed possibly in late November and then had his funeral. You can, some of this you can look online. Type in George Bush funeral indictments. And the, the camera's showing, and there's the Obama's yucking it up, or Obama's yucking it up, and Clinton yucking it up. And then Trump walks in, and boy. And then Hillary opens up her little program, and a letter falls out. And Cheney opens up, and a letter falls out. And Obama opens, and a letter falls out. And Pence opens his up, and a letter falls out. And Bush opens up his and a letter falls out. And Jeb Bush, if he didn't have his depends on at that time, he would have filled his britches. <laughs> so at that time, Q was implying indictments. Heading to Gitmo down in Cuba. And nothing happened, so I gave up on Q. You know, and I know that justice takes a long time. And so I picked it up here of late again, and again, this is just speculation of trying to research. Possibly, possibly, President Trump is talking about a storm. And last, yesterday he had pictures. He's kind of yucking it up, pretty confident, said, uh, storm is coming. Calm before the storm. And the press is saying, what do you mean by the storm? And he says, you'll see. So if the interpretation is correct, a two-week uh, quarantine possibly will be enforced, or, yeah, and many arrests can be taken place. Of what? High-level pedophiles. Okay, and if you want to research and kind of learn some things, Google seems to have changed some of their algorithms so that now you can research adrenochrome Clinton. Okay, and where it was being hid, where the algorithms have changed things, where you type it in, you can't find it. So it seems that President Trump and these military leaders have a master plan, maybe like the Count of Monte Cristo. Okay, and, and China's working with them, it seems, and, and uh, Italy, or Italy seems to be. So a two-week quarantine where people will be arrested and brought down to Gitmo. Oh, they're going to broadcast that Tom Hanks got the virus, but he's probably arrested. Because Ellen DeGeneres made sure she got on Facebook and showed her perverse t-shirt and said to Hanks to... That perverse t-shirt is a video of Uma Aberdeen and Hillary Clinton doing something very, very bad that I would not suggest if it does come out to watch. And if you observe some of these things, cleanse yourself to shed blood. There's a fine line of understanding some of these things. Okay, you can do a little research. You get online and type in fall cabal, C-A-B-A-L. Ken, have you seen that one? Okay. Ten parts. And you'll be surprised and you'll suffer cognitive dissonance. I thought this person was... Okay, and then and get on your knees and pray and ask God. Okay, so if we get a two-week quarantine, man, get some work done at home. I think Debbie bought some paint. I bought some shingles. Okay. And then if the Internet goes out 10 days, blackout, no Internet, no phone lines, cell phones. If that goes out for 10 days, don't be surprised. Don't panic. The TV might be popping on some documentaries. Might be, I'm not sure. 
We'll find out. And these documentaries will document the crimes that these people have been committing. And the average American will be suffering from cognitive dissonance. But they will understand why these people need executed. You know, you can't, you know, I'm not going to describe it because it's out, it's, it's, it's way out there. It is beyond human capability. It is the operation of devils infesting people to do this. People that Americans think are wonderful people or celebrities, yes, until you find out what goes on behind the scenes. So, since the Bible reveals this good and evil and has seen it for years, we ought to step back and look at this book. That's pretty impressive. That book is pretty impressive. How it writes it, where the kids don't pick up on it, and people who are blinded to it don't read it, don't see it, but it's there. It's in print, black and white. You read what those kings in Israel did, sacrificing children. Does that work? What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't get that. But it happened. When we were in Jerusalem this last time around, we're taking the tour bus, we're coming around the city wall, and, and the, the uh, guy, you know, um, doing the, the host of the bus, he said, right over, here's, right over here is the Valley of Hinnon. Did, did people stop and think what happened? If God gave you and I the capability when we walked through the Valley of Hinnon, we'd probably hear kids screaming, Vengeance, 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 oh my God. Because the Bible says that the blood cries vengeance, does it not? It says it, I believe it. And the land is defiled. And if this is going on in 600 and 700 and 800 B.C., I don't think the world's gotten better. And so, these things, this Bible is, man, you've got to step back. So if, if our president says the storm is here, rest in that. Okay, maybe he's a Josiah. A lot of folks are real optimistic, thinking we're going to have a revival. Don't think so. The church is too apostate. The preachers are too far gone. But an individual might come to Christ. Okay, and that's our opportunity. When people are desperate, we have an opportunity to tell them about the Lord and tell them, hey, this book, it's, it's been in here all this time. Why do you, why, you want to accept it for your salvation? How about accept it for your life? How about every topic in life that you want to discover? Get in this book. Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. It's in here. And so this desperation may cause some to consider. Now, the, the, slick, the, the very slick thing about the devil is he may bring in a counterfeit remedy. And so when God allows somebody, we need to be diligent to keep our heart because out of it are the issues of life. But be patient with people. Romans chapter 14 shows how we are to be with others when we have differences in beliefs. Patient. Okay, where he says, let everyone be, be fully persuaded in your own mind. Okay, I'm fully persuaded, but they're not. Okay, so maybe I can get them a little bit closer by gently showing them some things. And when they suffer from cognitive dissonance where just you can see almost their brain is frying on the spot. <laughs> Back off. Don't tell them, oh, you just don't believe the Bible. Just back off from them and let the Spirit of God work on their spirit and maybe bring some evidence. One of the men at Red Solar, he was he's got like five men around his work and he, he came out and said, Disney's just a bunch of satanic people. And these men like, you're crazy. One man 
later on came to him. He said, Randy, you do say some strange things, but I think you're right. One guy. And so you let those others stew on it for a while. And maybe the Spirit will give them some information. If they don't want it, the devil will give some information to say, see, he's nuts. And so the thing is, is we got to give people time. Just like Jesus did at the Maniac of Gadara. I mean, if, you know, if he, I would have thought Jesus, after he healed this guy, he could have appealed to those people in the Gadara and said, come on, look at the guy, he's in his right mind. I'm the one that fixed him. Why don't you come, come to me? No, they said, get out of here, get out of here. So he left. But then you read a few chapters later, he came back. Because we have to work, when we are mortals and we are dealing with our finite mind, there are some infinite truths that we got to work through. It's just like when you get injured in your body, you don't get healed immediately. It takes time for your body. And when it's an emotional scar, it takes time. And so this desperation is an opportunity that we can try to enlighten people, tell them about the Lord, answer their questions. You know, some folks are hunkering down to shoot everybody that comes in. I got a bunch of ammo, but I think it might have been gotten moist and might and might go. You know, I don't know. Okay, but the thing is, is it's an opportunity, yet we're patient with others. Because, when, I, you know, when a person goes through court stuff, especially the stress, is often, you know, you get impatient with each other. And you're not, you're not the problem. You and I are not the problem. You and I do not have first-hand knowledge. We're just all trying to speculate with all this information and misinformation. And so we are patient with each other, and if a person doesn't want to shake your hand, fine. If they want to practice social distancing, it makes my shot go better in basketball. You stay six feet away. <laughs> fine. I had a good time last night playing basketball. Hey, it's only 10 in a court, so we kept it within 10 minimum. No problem. <laughs> and so, you know, just be patient with people. But also be amazed with that book. Be amazed with our God. The mercy of God is amazing. And for when we get in eternity, God is going to brag about his grace. And you know what you and I get to do? You are so correct. You are so correct. God in his mercy saved Saul, who was a killer of people, and then became the apostle of the Gentiles. And throughout history, Saul is going to say, or Paul is going to say, you sure are a gracious God. And so we can do the same. So these are the options we're looking at. Just something I want to throw out, just so we can consider and pray. Okay, let's go and pray. Lord, I do ask that you'd help us to be informed, but not fearful. Help us to be understanding of the dark side, but not overcome. And Lord, I just pray that you'd bless that we might know exactly as you want us to lead, want us to do, lead and guide us, and help us to just recognize that when people are desperate, then that's that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity. And Lord, in the end, when we hit eternity. We're going to look back and say, why was I so nervous and scared? Well, that's because we're stuck in time. Help us to be patient with others. Help us to be patient with ourselves. And help us to love you more as a result of this time and be in awe of thy word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.